Today, we're talking about how to write the music for 16-bit action RPG, Dream Tales. Hey guys, this is Steven Malin, music composer, educator, and arranger, helping you to elevate your story. And today we're taking a look at the Dream Tales soundtrack. Now this was a soundtrack that I started working on last year. Unfortunately, with its Kickstarter launch, it did not receive enough funding to move on to the production, but I had the pleasure of at least writing a few tracks for the game and I had a really great time doing that. This was a 16-bit action RPG in the style of Zelda and it was a really cool game and I was really excited for it. A little bummed it never came to fruition, but I really enjoyed the time I got to write some of the music. Now the track we're looking at today is the Snow Village. It never really got a cool title, but um, kind of generic snow village but it is in a 16-bit style in a Super Nintendo style so I wanted to go through the process of showing you pretty quickly how I achieved this sound and how you can do the same within Logic or really any other DAW for that matter so let's take a look here is the track by itself repeats from there. So let's walk through how I actually achieved this sound. Now the first goal I had when writing for this is I wanted to keep it loopable. So you'll notice if you look at my time code up here, it starts at 2 minutes 30 seconds, it ends at 3.34, so it's a minute and 4 seconds. That's a good loop amount. Usually we aim for 45 seconds to 60 seconds, somewhere in that range. This one's a couple seconds longer uh, for looped environmental tracks in the 16-bit era. It's pretty standard. Uh, and so I want to make sure that the last chord of the piece is the same as the first chord. That way it loops seamlessly. Because you'll notice right here at the end, it sounds like the end of a track, and that's the whole point. So basically what I did is I wrote starting at the A section. I wrote that main theme. I went to the B section, wrote that main theme, and then put a little hook at the end that would act just like the beginning because you want it to loop seamlessly and you don't want people to really notice that it's looping. So as far as uh, the structure goes, I wanted to choose instruments that felt like snow. Uh, so the sleigh bells was a pretty obvious choice. For that, I'm just using a very basic EXS24 instrument, which is the kind of default orchestral sounds in Logic, and you'll notice in here, I didn't really do much to it except make the attack all the way down at zero milliseconds, and the release is pretty short as well. That's a pretty iconic feature of Super Nintendo music, and you also notice I put a bit crusher on it and turned the volume down. So I'm only downsampling to two times, but the resolution is 16-bit because we're going for 16-bit music. So that's a pretty simple thing there, but the piano sounds pretty iconic as well in this track. Just a basic little arpeggio going down. The way I got that sound, same thing with an EXS. I just grabbed a, a random piano, a Steinway piano in this case, made the attack all the way at zero, put the release pretty short, 
But what makes this sound really interesting is I put a tape delay on the stereo out. And so if you were to study Super Nintendo hardware, you will know that there's quite a range of delay, but there's an iconic Super Nintendo delay sound that is found within the sound chip of that system. And so most pieces use it. And so I just chose to use 87 milliseconds and it seems to work well with this tempo. I just put it 70% dry, 30% wet, 18% feedback. There really is no magic amount here, but playing around with tape delay is gonna get you that sound. And then I bit crushed it down four times. You can kind of hear the difference here if I were to loop that. You can hear the difference between all the down samples. I liked four the best, especially if I were to take it completely off, you can hear it plain. With the bit crusher. And then with the tape delay, just adds that extra little bit of nostalgia and that ambience really it adds a little bit of atmosphere to have uh, that little bit of delay. So the same is true of any of these instruments. I like to bit crush them down pretty heavily. Same thing with strings, also compress them down a little bit here. You can see not terribly so, but enough to where they're just crushed and they, they don't have much room for dynamic range because they're pretty loud, but they're consistently loud. That whole thing. Now harp is a really great instrument for transitions in this style. So harp, same thing, put some bit crusher, put some tape delay. Well, the tape delay is on the stereo. So not, there's really no secret sauce here except to make sure that your releases are short and your attacks are short. You got a tape delay on there. But harp just acts as such a nice transition. Here it is without it. You can notice a huge difference. It's not bad without it, but man, does it help. kind of accelerates you into the new section, which is why this works so well as an outro and an intro. It's a great double usage there. Now let's talk about woodwinds for a second here, because this is something that I recently tried with this project, which I think makes it sound even more authentic as a Super Nintendo title. And that is to crush down your range up here. Now this is EXS, you can do this in any sampler, but basically what I mean is I am limiting the number of velocities that my instrument can have. So normally you might have this all the way down to, to negative infinity or negative 50, whatever. Meaning when you push that key on your MIDI controller, it has multiple layers that you can get volume wise which normally is a good thing with sample instruments, but in Super Nintendo era, with that hardware being so limited, basically everything was the same volume level. And if you wanna imitate that, then you should try crushing back and holding back a little bit. If I pull open my flute, you can see the same, same kind of thing. Um, I just pulled them back enough to where I'm not getting too much of a range, and it seems to help quite a bit with your velocities. Because if you were to look in here, you'll notice how there's a lot of different colors. This is a logic based thing within Logic Pro, but again, it works on anything where you see how there's like a yellowish color, an orangish color. So that means that when I played this, when I recorded it in, there were different velocity levels. But what's so nice about this is removing that range allows everything to be at the same, generally the same velocity without having to go back and change my colors. So something that I like to play around with quite a bit in the 16-bit era is to come down here into EXS where we can play around with the mod wheel and we can actually assign effects to it. So probably the best effect we can mess around with is pitch because that's how we can add vibrato naturally. So if I go into here, I can change it to controller number one, which is my mod wheel. I can go to LF01 and that way, Kind of ridiculous when I move my mod wheel, but 
it's because I got to move this back down to zero cents, which is like my neutral pitch. And then drag this guy instead of crazy, crazy high, put it at a very small amount, like 30. Now when I move my mob wheel up, I actually start to get some decent. Again, a little bit too much. So I'm gonna drag it back down, drag maybe the bottom up a little bit, just so they're not perfectly even. You can play with it however, you, however much you'd like to do there, but the idea is you can now manipulate that while you play and have more emotional control without losing the original sample. And again, over here, my release really has a huge impact because you want to keep it short so that as soon as you let go, the sample stops. And the reason you're even hearing anything is because of that tape delay. If I were to turn it off, you can kind of hear how it instantly stops. And so by adding that tape delay, it just adds so much life to it. there you have it. It's a pretty simple process, but I found this to be a really fun track to write. And I think it works well. And a quick note here on this B section, I just decided I want to use bassoon because it's a nice colorful instrument to pair with the strings and the woodwinds. And it kind of keeps it a little bit uh, more melodic and less rhythmic because this first section is super rhythmic. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 with the pizzicato strings that I wanted to be more fluid over here. I still kept some motion going in the harp over here. Keep it peaceful. Just having all these cool little harmonies in the woodwinds keeps it moving. Harmonically, especially towards the end. Then it loops and goes from there. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little tutorial of how I wrote the music for Dream Tales. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that like button and smash the subscribe button so that you can be notified of all new videos. I always have studio composing videos like this on Mondays, music business videos on Wednesdays, and VGM arrangements on Fridays. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.